Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham and Leo and today we have a special video. I don't usually like making these videos because I don't feel like I'm selling you guys anything. Like I, I don't really gain anything from talking about products and stuff, but I'm really happy. Actually, well, I'm it, today is a bittersweet experience and I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, but today I got my display tablet, so I don't think I can uh, change my camera right now to show it to you. Uh, but, 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 but. I do have a picture of my setup. Let me show it here real quick. There we go. <laughs> so this is my setup right now. And as you can see, I got myself a Canvas 16 Pro, uh, the 2021 version uh, from Huion. And um, it's the first time in eight years that I changed my tablet. I've been using a Wacom Intuos Pro for literally eight years. I bought it back in 2013. And uh, yeah, so I'm really happy. I've been testing this uh, for a couple of uh, like hours now, just very little actually. So I want you to, I, I want to take you guys through uh, some of the softwares that we normally use and share my experience with this. So the way I'm working right now, you can see here on my screen, is I'm mirroring my main monitor and my tablet here, the, the Huion. So that whatever I do over here, it's gonna be uh, on the on the on the screen, of course. So let's jump through some of them, okay? Let's jump through some of the of the softwares real quick. And again, as I've mentioned, I don't like doing like this sort of like uh, product uh, placement things because I'm I'm not like an amb ambassador from Huion or anything. But I I thought that it might be helpful for you guys, especially if you're I would say like intermediate level artists and you're thinking about getting a display tablet, like whether it's a, it's a good investment or not. This one ran me about five hundred dollars uh, plus a little bit of shipping. I think and uh, let me tell you guys I'm really 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 impressed so uh, first of all the displays like the size of the display I think it's great I got again as I mentioned the 16 uh, size so it has 15.6 inches of like workable space the screen has an, an anti-glare thing so you don't really see the reflection I have like several lights here on my on my office to, to get a, like like a good lighting and I don't see any reflections on the screen it has the 8,000 levels of pressure or eight, yeah 8,000 levels of pressure so so you're gonna see like super super small lines super big lines and and the fading is just it's just amazing uh, this one the 2021 version says that it has this new pen which is I believe the like 517 version or something like that. And there's like a couple of things. One of the things that I was really hesitant about like the Huion brand and the XP brand is that I know that some pens use batteries and that was like a big no-no for me. Like I, I just don't wanna mess with batteries. This one is battery free, so you don't need a battery, pretty much like a, like a Wacom tablet. Um, when comparing both, uh, like both pens, I think the web Wacom tablet has a little bit more weight to it. So if you're used to, to having like a heavy pen, you will feel this one be a little bit lighter. I don't mind it as much, but I know some people are really used to the to the whole thing. Uh, now this tablet that I got has a nice little like uh, platform that you can raise and change the the inclination to. I'm using the highest inclination just to get like the best view. And yeah, I mean, as you can see here, it, it's pretty cool. There's two buttons. So one of them in this case is my right click so that I can change from, from one uh, like brush to the other. And the other one is the, right now I have it to middle, middle mouse click, which doesn't really do anything here inside of Photoshop. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, pretty, pretty cool. One of the things that I struggled quite a bit with the, uh, with like other tablets and stuff, was like drawing straight lines. Like I always, always, always struggle with straight lines, but here, like I can show you, it's literally pretty much as drawing. Let me do a little bit better. There we go. Let's do a little bit of, of perspective work here. There we go, let's do like a little cube. So it's pretty much like drawing on paper. It's pretty, pretty cool. If you guys are interested in like a drawing and concept art, I think this is really, really cool. And I do think it's a nice upgrade. Uh, of course, it's a little bit more expensive, but I think you guys are gonna get a, a nice experience out of it. So that's for Photoshop. We, we can do a little bit of like painting later on. I'm not a great concept artist. I'm more like a 3D artist. Uh, but I want to show you how to do like traditional hand painted textures. So if that's something that you want to see, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll prepare something for you. I already have the molds. I just need to show you how to how to paint them. Uh, but yeah, so ZBrush was the one that surprised me like the most. And, and the reason is I've been using ZBrush for, for 10 years and all of those years I've been using like a traditional like tablet. So one thing that I do like is that my setup allows me and uh, you can see it like here. Oop, where is it? 
There we go. So my setup, as you can see, allows me to have um, like my keyboard right on top of the of the tablet, which is really cool. Uh, so I can still use my keyboard shortcuts without much of a deal. Uh, however, if you don't have the keyboard nearby, you do have uh, 10 action buttons or, or like special buttons on the side of the tablet that work really well as, as well. I haven't like calibrated anything. Like for instance, this one's like the brush one. So actually that's quite handy. So you would need to have like, your hand like up here on the on the tablet, of course, uh, but it helps. So let me show you why I think this is amazing. I'm gonna give this guy a couple of subdivisions to be like above 1 million. And one of the things that I was really, really surprised is how, how precise I can do my lines now. So usually I will have to like really, really calibrate where I want to have like my, my wrinkles and stuff. But now it's super, super easy to just like really go in there and draw exactly the kind of like like a wrinkle that I would like. So I, I, I don't think this is going to be one of those things that make you a better artist. It, it's not really like that. Um, as I've mentioned before, they're all tools, right? Like softwares are tools, Wacom tablets are tools, uh, your keyboard, your screen, like everything that you have uh, for yourself can and is a tool, but it does make the job a little bit easier. Now, if a like a student that's just starting says, should I spend $500 buying a display pen? I wouldn't recommend it if you're just beginning, like wait a little bit, get yourself a, a nice economical tablet. And then if you really like what you're doing and you, you, you see yourself doing this in the long run, like for a living, then I, I actually think it's a great upgrade. I talked to one of my friends, Ed Fox, uh, he's an illustrator before buying this one. And I was ask, asking the same question. Someone, someone in the comments yesterday mentioned like, well, what would be the difference between this one and the XP pen? He, he has a little bit more experience with tablet because he has teach or taught in, in different schools where they have more tablets. And he mentioned that he likes the build of the Huion a little bit better than the one from the XP pen. Like it feels a little bit more solid. So if you're going to be traveling a lot or bringing this to your school or to your workplace and then back home or to your studio, then I think the canvas would be a little bit better, the Huion. Um, personally, I, I look for prices and here in Mexico, the Huion was a little bit more, was cheaper and they got like two day uh, free shipping. Well, not free shipping, but it was two day shipping. Uh, so, so that allowed me or made the decision a little bit easier for me, right? So yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's it's pretty intuitive, it's pretty straightforward. One of my biggest fears as a, as a, as a ZBrush artist was that my hand was gonna get in the way and uh, it really doesn't, so so that's fine. One thing though, and I'm not using it, they do give you this little like glove. It's very fancy, you look very fancy with this. You, you really look like a pro, uh, but it's so that your like hand slides a little bit smoother on the, on the screen. Um, so whenever, whenever we're using Seabrush, you might see me looking at the screen down here a little bit more than, than usual. Uh, just keep in mind that I'm knowing, not ignoring you guys. It's just that now that we have the display, um, I'm going to be focusing on this side. But yeah, as you can see, like, look how easy it is to create like this detail. And it's not something that I wouldn't be able to do with my traditional pen. It's just that it's a little bit easier because I, I really, really know where I'm placing my thing rather than having to like calculate where my stroke is going to be. Again, straight lines do become a little bit easier here. And uh, yeah, so let's jump very quickly to the last software that I want to I wanna show that. That starts to look quite nice, right? Actually, gonna quick save this guy because I, I kind of like that detail. I think we can keep working on this guy uh, later. So let's jump on to the last one, which is the, I, I did a quick uh, test before starting to record this thing. Because one thing that I really, really love, and, and that's one of the things that I've been uh, practicing a couple of, uh, like I've been doing this for, for a couple of years now, but I, I haven't really like gone into doing it, is hand painted textures. So if you know about games like World of Warcraft, League of Legends, uh, Darksiders and stuff like that, they, they have this very nice stylized effect and a lot of these things are hand painted, right? So so you don't really use like smart materials or anything. You, you actually paint the shadows, you paint the lights, you paint every single thing that you see here is actually painted. So so this is the kind of thing that I want to show you. If you guys are, are okay with it, we can do like a small little tutorial on how to like model one small low poly weapon and then texture it, t texturize it so that it looks a little bit better. Again, I'm not the best concept artist, but we can always exp expand and, and try new techniques, right? So I went ahead and I uh, jumped into, into Substance and let's open here like the jade toad there we go so i'm gonna press uh, f1 or f2 rather let me go into the display turn off shadows there we go so you can see that right now this toad right here is uh is using like traditional pbr materials it's actually using some surface and stuff so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add a few layer 
and then this fill layer, I'm gonna bring the roughness all the way to the top. So it's pretty much like a flat uh, object. And then let's change this color to like a base green, like that. And then I'm gonna start a paint layer, but this paint layer will only paint color. So I'm gonna turn off everything here. And I'm just gonna leave my color channel open. There we go. And now what we can do is pretty much the same thing. Oh, I'm still getting used to some of the, of the shortcuts here. There we go. What we can do is pretty much like, like if we were painting like a, a traditional miniature, you guys know I love Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons and this is what I do when I paint my minis. So I'm gonna grab like a, like a dark blue color here. And then we can just start painting where we want this thing to be. I'm gonna turn off the size and on the flow so that we can create this sort of like gradient. And look at how nice this transitions, right? And then I can sample like this color again and just like create this nice little highlight there. So if you guys are fans of, uh, of traditional like, or not traditional, just, I'm actually gonna go to C, which is the, the base channel to grab the exact color and then back to M. It should paint it back into the same color. There we go. And we can just like create a nice little effect there. Let's go to like a yellow color. And again, let's, I'm gonna make my brush smaller. So let's go over here. And we can like highlight this thing right there. And there's blur stuff. I mean, you can have like this crisscross technique, like there, there's a lot of things you can do and it's it's really fun. To be honest, it's really, really fun. I, I haven't had this fun uh, with like a new product in, in a while. I, I've been doing like improving my RAM and my motherboard, but that's just like general improvement on the computer. This is the first time I'm actually feeling like I'm playing with a new toy. And again, I apologize if this is a little bit boring. I just thought it would be uh, good information for you guys. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. We're gonna be doing more stuff with the, with the tablet. Nothing that we haven't done before. It's just gonna be a, little, a different medium. Uh, do I recommend getting a pen display? Yes, I think it's a good investment. Do I recommend it for beginner level students? No, wait until you're really, really sure you want to do this because it's a big investment. It's 500 bucks that you could get like an Xbox for with that. So if you're not, if you're just like a like an entry level or a hobby level 3D artist, a, a traditional Wacom tablet is more than fine or an XP pen or a Huion, whatever. Uh, if you're really serious about your craft and you want to you wanna take the jump, I do recommend this one. I know that it's just one day that I've been using this, but my friend has been using his for like three years now, and he he was the one who recommended this brand to me. I think it's a good brand. I've seen some reviews online. The customer service seems to be okay, so I think it's a good one. If you can see, if you see an offer like on Black Friday or throughout the year, and you say, "Hey, I I, I can do this," uh, go for it. I think I think it's a, it's a nice little uh, thing. So before we finish the video though, there's another thing I want to talk about and this is the, the bittersweet news and I left this until the very end because um, uh, it's just it's just a sad news. So the sad news is that Pixelogic has um, announced uh, like the latest news. Let me see if I can find them here. I actually found it on the, on the Pixelogic Reddit, on the Seabrush Reddit. So I, I don't think they did like a, like a big, uh, what's the word, like a big announcement, of course, but they gave a little bit more information about the perpetual licenses and the, and the subscriptions. So what it pretty much says is that, yes, perpetual license will never expire. I mean, that's something that we already knew. So if you bought the perpetual license in the past 20 years, then you can just continue using your software as usual. However, um, perpetual licenses that were bought after December 29, 2021, so pretty much like since those last couple of days, will only receive critical bug fix updates, okay? So if you bought your ZBrush in the last couple of days, I'm sorry to say you're out of luck and you will only receive critical bug fix, fix updates. Uh, it does say somewhere else, not in this little post, that if you bought it before December 29, 2021, you will have one year of updates uh, from the time of your purchase. I'm not sure if it's from the time you purchased it or from this like past uh, December 29. So uh, it's a bad news. This, these are bad news. Like we can't deny it. They're pretty much saying that the way they've been working, it's now gone. There's this little bit of hope still left. Like some people say that this is the same way that they've been phrasing other things. So maybe everyone that bought the license before uh, the acquisition will still get like perpetual like <laughs> upgrades every now and then. 
I don't think that's going to be the way. I was looking at the, at the Cinema 4D's like a business model and they sell you a very hefty, like it's very, very expensive, uh, uh, like one time or like perpetual license. So I think what's probably going to happen is that they will maybe give us an update for the next year. So 2022.1.2.3.4. And then when they release 2023 at the end of the year, which is usually when they release it, they will say, hey, if you have a perpetual license, you're going to have to pay, I don't know, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars and you'll get the update for another year. Am I happy with this? No, I'm totally bummed out. I, I hate this. I, I hate to see a company that was so cool for such a long time to pretty much sell out. I don't think there's another other, any other way to say it. I know that that's business, that that's what needs to happen, you know, to pay salaries and to keep growing and stuff. I'm I'm just one of those guys that still think that things should be done. Like, if you're doing something in a way, like what we've been doing here in the channel, like, I'm not suddenly going to be asking you guys for donations and stuff. That That's not how, how we are. That's not in our philosophy. So, so that's not something that we're going to do. And uh, I think they should have sticked with some of the things that made them Pixelogic, right? Hopefully, hopefully that's the only like uh, bright side that I can see to this. If the amount of money they're receiving from Maxon allows them to build like amazing features, like revolutionary features, like what Dynamesh was 10 years ago, then okay, maybe it, it might be worth it. But for now, it doesn't, I don't see anything yet. So we're going to have to wait and hope. If the pricing becomes really, really expensive, like they're, if they start asking like $500 to give updates for another year, I think that's way too much. If they keep it reasonable, reasonable, like, I don't know, 200, 250, maybe even $300, I would be willing to pay $300 for another year of Seabrush because I use it so much. Uh, but if they go higher than that, it's, it's going to be a no for me. And um, the only other bright side that I see to this is that Blender will uh, be improving. So this gives Blender a chance to step up. And if they can improve their sculpting things uh, and get in, in, in line or closer to what Seabrush can do, then that's that's good for us for artists but unfortunately right now yeah the situation is not it's not as great okay so yeah that's the that's the sad note so let's go into blender real quick because we haven't talked about blender today and some of you guys were surprised that i was uh <laughs> well you weren't surprised because i've been mentioning it but we were like oh that's cool that someone else is doing blender yeah I'm, I'm, i've been loving blenders lately and uh i've been learning a lot of things so um i haven't tried the the thing here so let's see how this works so let's start with like a sphere Let's go to modifiers and let's add like a subdivision here. Let's do like a couple of subdivisions and apply them. And let's go into the sculpting. Okay, so navigation is gonna be a little bit tricky for me. Well, I get used to it. <laughs> so you're gonna have to excuse me there. There we go. Okay, yeah, so it, it traces perfectly. Uh, I do like the the effect, uh, yeah, I'm, I like it. So that's good. Again, I, I'm gonna have to, there we go. I'm gonna have to get used to a little bit of the navigations and the shortcuts because I'm not really, I'm not really um, trained in, in, the, in the Blender like sculpting process, but this doesn't seem too far off from, from Seabrush. I know that it doesn't have as many brushes as, as what Seabrush usually has. Uh, but this doesn't seem that bad, to be honest. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. Little different video today. I know we've had so many different videos this week. Believe me, next week I'm back in, in classes with universities. So things are going to go back to to normality as when i've been working very hard on uh, one of our premium courses i have a very big news about the premium courses we're we're working really high we're hard behind the scenes uh, believe me guys so so all of you all of this too to make sure that we can deliver amazing content to you guys so thank you thank you very much i hope you like this uh, different video let, let us know in the comments what you think about it leave a like share subscribe and i'll see you back tomorrow bye bye guys have a nice saturday I'm still not used to where the screen is. There we go. <laughs> so see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.